Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And if you want to support the channel for absolutely free and get this uh, and really help the uh, YouTube algorithm get this quality content out there. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share uh, with your fellow colleagues, as well as uh, you know on Instagram and also on uh, other social media like uh, Facebook would be really appreciated. So, um, getting into this week's upcoming news, uh, we have on trading economics the week ahead. We have. Zoom in a little bit. We've got uh, the US and China will be publishing inflation updates for April in the coming week. That is important because um, inflation has a knock on effect on um, monetary policy. So, whether central banks will hike, hold, or cut. And if you want to uh, find out exactly what that means, then uh, you can go to my YouTube channel or click on the link in the, in the uh, uh, top right hand side and it'll take you to um, a, a mentoring uh, video I had with a student explaining really the fundamentals and how you can really understand uh, currency value from an interest rate, inflation and GDP perspective and the knock-on effect of monetary policy. Uh, while first quarter GDP releases from the UK um, and we don't trade Malaysia or the Philippines uh, and factory production numbers from the US Eurozone will be keenly watched. Other important data uh, to follow include US retail sales and consumer confidence, uh, Japan current account and Australia business morale and the ECB will be publishing its monetary policy meeting minutes which is something to watch out for while central banks in Mexico and Philippines again we won't, don't really uh, go there with the Mexican uh, and Philippine cu currencies but yeah very uh, some um, some interesting um, uh, news uh, data um, macroeconomic data coming ahead so uh, something to watch out for this week and this could be you know some catalyst for um, some uh, currency moves so heading into the technicals and in-depth fundamentals and let's get into Dow Jones dollar index and the DXY the dollar index and really um, the, uh, the really the surprise news this week was from the jobs report so um, jobs report is latest sign of growing pains for the US economy and uh, hiring and supply chain constraints holding back employment gains and recovery won't be straightforward as pandemic uh, effects linger and there was a there was really a massive miss because there was a lot of um, economists and banks really that were predicting um, anywhere between a million to two million jobs so you got Standard Charters, Jefferies, Goldman Sachs, Nomura, Deutsche Bank, all of the, you know the major banks really kind of predicting on the Friday uh, non-farm payrolls and, and and unemployment rate um, to be you know the majority was was above you know a million and for unemployment rate to be around the five point eight and that actually came out um, a lot worse than expected. So um, it caught the market really off guard and that's the reason why you're seeing prices uh, really kind of do uh, this on the dollar index which is basically just a measure of dollar strength against you know uh, major currencies like the um, the euro and the pound and the Japanese yen. So unfortunate for the, the, the dollar and the dollar had been really on a kind of downward um, uh, move which was actually surprising because you did get during the month of April uh, you really got some some positive news regarding inflation but um, price really wasn't reacting uh, to that positive um, uh, news um, not just inflation it was employment as well but you just had this you know really kind of unusual sell-off with really no pullback and now we've got um, some bad news you would think that the opposite might happen right but um, you know uh, the the uh, the, the setback, I guess, in, in the economy really has uh, caused uh, the, the dollar overall to weaken. Is it temporary? Possibly. There's some obviously details in here. And it was talking about the um, the fact that the uh, the, uh, uh, the companies are actually um, finding it hard to uh, uh, find workers. Right. It's it's a, it's a bit of a strange one. It's what they call um, 
And let me just read this for you. So it says, while economists are optimistic about future growth, employers are facing hiring challenges as well as supply chain disruptions and higher cost Friday jobs report. So um, it fails. So the data suggests that the recovery in the pandemic will continue to be volatile in the coming months. And despite surging job openings, right, companies say that they're having trouble recruiting workers because of ongoing fears of catching the virus. So jobs are available, but people are... Um, uh, are hesitant probably to go back oh, also as well there is the um you know stimulus checks etc who wants to go back um to work when you go so you get some free money but um there was uh, something i wanted to uh, point out as well it's a very interesting article on, on bloomberg but federal reserve jerome powell has previously said any changes to monetary policy will depend on months of strong employment the april data could move the fed's timeline further into the future according to some economists which makes sense and it's really what i was talking about with um, my uh, private mentoring group is that um, the dollar now for me is probably a sell in the short term any pullbacks to supply will be um, will be a short uh, would be uh, sells and when I say short term you're looking at maybe one to three months until the data really starts to come in positive I think the uh, the dollar um, against various some some other uh, currencies not every single currency of course but other currencies is probably um, a sell and um and so with that being said uh pullbacks to any kind of supply zones um uh, would be and 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 kind of sell off around here would be great confluence because you understand that from looking at the uh the dxy the dollar index that the dollar overall should potentially you know want to sell off or there's confluence there if for example fortunes change for the dollar then this demand zone is quite decent for a potential long trade and again you want to see use this as just confluence and if the dollar starts to uh, to rally a little bit based off of news because we're always looking at you know fundamental analysis and reasons why this is a potential bargain um, then that would be the, really the catalyst um, when we're seeing price react to um, some you know fundamentals of risk sentiment but um, uh, for now I think the dollar may want to continue selling off doesn't mean it's going to sell off forever and it's going to be you know a hundred bearish days that doesn't it's not how it works um, you know there are pullbacks there's profit taking for example um, but for now I think from a confluence perspective uh, the dollar um, I've kind of changed my bias on the dollar um, from a sentiment and fundamental perspective on certain pairs and uh, yeah it's for me it's probably just looking for pullbacks to potentially short the uh, the dollar um, moving on to the uh, dollar yen the dollar yen again um the yen isn't doing uh, too well either but i think with the with the recent negative sentiment around uh, you know us jobs this, you know the dollar's pretty much selling off um as a whole so uh, last week you did have prices come up to this nice fresh supply zone area and prices did react so if you did manage to get short on the uh, the dollar well done to you she should be in a bit of profit we've come down to a bit of a demand zone again why would you want to be a buyer of the dollar right now is the question and that's not to say that prices can't go up from here but um you have to understand that um, you're buying the dollar against the Japanese yen and uh, although the, the dollar is in, in, in a bit of trouble um, Japan also is in a lot of trouble as well so Japan seeks to extend the virus emergency covering Tokyo to the 31st of May so measures to be expanded include uh, I don't know how to pronounce that H E I guess uh, Fukuola I think there's no L in there but um, uh yeah, those prefectures minister says may um, visit by IOC's president would be difficult. And the uh, Japan are hosting, I think, the um, uh, Tokyo Games, I think it is, uh, the, the the Olympics, I think it is. Yeah, this is the Olympics in less than three months. And they've, you know, they're going into lockdown. So they're under a lot of pressure at the moment. So although, again, the dollar might be... Um, potentially uh, a sell would it be a sell against the Japanese yen is the question and uh, I think there are definitely better uh, currencies to buy against the dollar so if you do think you know that the yen may be a potential um, sell also against the, the dollar then you're really looking for um, a 
buy trade either here or at this 108 or just this one below the 108 level if you're looking for sell trades you're looking for a pullback up into this supply zone and then a bit of a sell-off there but um the pair itself isn't necessarily the the greatest to look at looking at the dollar swiss and the dollar swiss again um this week we've had the, the swiss franc really kind of um strengthen which is um which is a bit of a was a bit of a strange one for the pretty much again the whole of um of april but now the catalyst really was you know this week uh, the dollar weakness there was a nice uh, supply zone hidden supply here and again if you did manage to get short on the um on the dollar against the swiss franc uh, that would have worked out really really nice for you um that level i probably was saying is probably gone and really the next level down if you're looking to be a buyer of the dollar it's going to be at that zone right there so uh, decent for a potential buy but um, from a sell trade perspective you're looking at any kind of pullbacks before getting short um, for me the swiss franc is definitely never a buy um, with especially with negative interest rates so um, unless we're in a risk off environment and at the moment risk on is prevalent so um, again from a, from a buying the uh, uh, the swiss the, the the Swiss franc against the dollar isn't something that I would really be interested in. Um, moving on to the uh, dollar CAD, and the CAD is uh, doing really well. A lot of forecasts were pretty much saying that uh, the the Canadian dollar would strengthen around the one two ones, and really it has actually come true. Really, really nice trades uh, to the short side. So I think continue short sides, especially because. Uh, the Bank of Canada have uh, come out and said that they're looking, uh, well, they actually did taper. So tapering means uh, the removal of uh, bond purchases and quantitative easing. So, um, or with the reduction, I should say, of that. And uh, so what you're seeing is two really kind of central banks um, and monetary policies really diverging. And you're basically seeing this happen with regards to uh, price. So any pullbacks, if you want to get you know, short on this currency pair back to the one, two, three areas is actually, you know, really nice. There isn't any major demand. There's demand from back in 2018, but I really kind of hesitate, or I should say 2017, it's definitely a level, but I hesitate to put that demand zone there because whatever drove prices higher from here may not be the same thing and is not the same thing uh, as what may drive prices around, you know, higher around this area. Um, in this price zone here so I'd prefer for price really although it is a level to look for and there will be you know traders taking profit yeah it's definitely a nice institutional level that, that, uh, that um, banks definitely look at and towards when it comes to uh, or they will anyway uh, but from a demand zone perspective it's just not something I would look to buy and I wouldn't really look to buy the dollar right now anyway so you want to really wait for maybe some sort of proof of value for the demand zone to create itself and then maybe potentially look for a pullback into that zone if, if uh, you know the fortunes for the dollar has changed then that's when you want to get you know long back into that demand zone um, now moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and the New Zealand dollar did, actually did have some decent news this week. Um, New Zealand dollar jobless rate unexpectedly fell for the first quarter, so unemployment uh, fell from 4.7 to from 4.9 in the fourth quarter, and joblessness still above pre-pandemic rate stimulus to remain. So positive news for the New Zealand dollar this week as prices came back down into this uh, deeper into this demand zone, and then with the catalyst obviously of um, uh, US jobs as well and uh, not doing great this was would have been a really nice uh, buy but remember at the time hindsight we don't suffer from hindsight bias is that the expectation was for the dollar to actually do really really well um, and add like you know a million jobs a million plus jobs so this would have been a really hard trade to take in the first place but um, you can pretty much just see that you know the way that divergences really work when you have one uh, country um, you know doing decent and another country not doing well right so 
how to kind of play this if you really want to get long it would be for you know uh, to look for pullbacks potentially into demand zones or newly created demand zones if prices make you know new highs for example they prices pull back make a new high and then you pull back into that demand zone before looking at getting long um, from a short trade perspective again you'd have to ask why you want to be buying the uh, the US dollar but if you do then there's a short trade probably the highs up here would be uh, better suited for um, for any kind of short trades as that's a fresher area of supply and uh, but I think demand zones all the way this level is probably going to get adjusted now if we see new high so that's where the new demand zone is and uh, yeah let's see what happens with this currency pair um, so now let's go on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar benefiting from um, uh, some really good news this week matter of fact uh, Bank of England uh, says uh, the UK is set for the strongest economic growth since World War Two. So interest rates, you know, to be kept at record low of 0.1 with GDP growth now forecast to rise to 7.25% in 2021. So Britain is on track for the strongest growth since Second World War this year as it stages faster than expected recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, according to the Bank of England. So that's usually positive for a uh, a, a currency and against the backdrop of a potential um, a setback for the US economy, then this actually looks like a really, really nice uh, potential sell. Now, uh, from a supply zone perspective, I'd probably draw it from there, and then you want to draw demand zone, quite a wide demand zone, but it's there as we're making higher highs and higher lows. So any kind of pullbacks into this zone, I think around here is gonna be a really nice, pullback intraday if not if prices kind of break through that supply zone then any kind of pullbacks will be um, quite decent so um, I've got a long bias I haven't traded the, the pound dollar for ages but I actually now might start to uh, look for um, buy trades intraday buy trades capture pain relief stop hunts um, and daily uh, demand zones from from a long trade perspective now on the uh, on the pound dollar and take advantage potentially of some uh, recent uh, uh, positive news for the not only the pound but negative news for the US. Um, but if you do want to get short on the uh, the dollar, um, I wouldn't say now is the right time. Probably looking for prices to pull back up into that area of supply, and then also as prices come up here, if there is some good news for the dollar or bad news for the pound, then look for potential short trades into that area there. Moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar, um, what a decent trade this was. We, uh, um, the group um, uh, we, we've been talking about in the private mentoring group, uh, that the, 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 really the banks are talking about the one, two, five. We've been saying this for quite a while, even in the face of positive um, dollar news. And this is because the uh, Europe are now set to actually be you know to come back on track with their their recovery so um as europe starts to recover um the uh, the, the, the banks forecast a really a higher euro dollar and you've actually seen it you know here where prices have come down into this nice demand zone and then we've just seen a, a really nice buy trade again it would have been a difficult one to buy simply because of the Dollar. We were actually, I was actually um, taking advantage potentially of a short trade, a short trade setup um, around here, um, seeing if prices could actually go to the downside a bit further before going higher. Um, uh, but it didn't quite work out. Uh, made a small profit on that. The rest of the positions got taken out a break even. But now my bias really is to uh, the upside on this currency pair for now. I just changed my bias. Uh, from, a, from a fundamental perspective and as long as again the data supports the narrative it's not necessarily a guaranteed buy because you still have to see Europe um, you know come through with their uh, with their data right there's no point in just buying the euro if the data doesn't support the narrative you can say whatever you want about buying the euro and what potentially may happen but if it doesn't happen and you don't see the data support the narrative then it's not really a buy but let's see um, what happens because there is negative sentiment um, and negative data around the dollar so 
what typically happens is is that um, the, the euro can be a beneficiary of that. So any kind of pullbacks, if we get any, um, then for me is a, a, a bit of a medium to long term buy on the uh, on the euro dollar. Um, and again, just some fundamental news. So ECB's uh, Kazakhs says June decision to slow bond buying possible. So again, central banks slowing bond buying, which is usually positive for a um, for a currency that could also add weight to a, um, a a stronger euro, which actually is not beneficiary for the um, for the uh, European Central Bank. A lot of um, banks actually want a cheaper and a depreciating and devalued currency while they're um, while they're recovering. But um, but yeah, we'll see what happens with this. But long long my lo um, I've changed my bias to being. Uh, long on the euro dollar so any pullback this is going to be an absolute bargain I think uh, the 120 level if we can you know pull back there if not then you're looking for prices to go really kind of go higher maybe some sort of demand zone pullback and then you see uh, those areas there if you want to get short I think now is a decent time that's a nice technical demand zone but I think the path of least resistance is to the upside or if you're looking to get short around there that area the 123 zone uh, moving on to the euro yen and euro yen I really wanted to be a buyer euro yen um, there was a setup but it, just, it was I think it was about maybe 20 pips um, prices just didn't come down far enough for me to be able to look for an entry but prices and the prices actually went to the upside unfortunately um, it was a bit of a CPR zone um, but uh, let's see what happens we can still get involved in this uh, if this is probably a demand zone, not the strongest area of demand at the moment because prices haven't made a higher high, but there is definitely demand there. If prices do pull back, um, it's I would really want prices to go higher first and then pull back to this zone before looking at getting uh, long. I want it to make a higher high because um, then that really kind of does prove that this is a strong area of demand. If not, then I think this is going to be an absolute bargain or if prices can pull back to my original area where I want it to be a bit long which is just below this 131 uh, level is where I'm looking for potential uh, buys uh, again understanding the, the, the yen uh, going into uh, lockdown or they're actually in lockdown and, and, and extending lockdowns then um, yeah that's uh, that's the, 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 the yen is definitely not a buy in my book and with the euro probably benefiting from um, not only uh, the, their recovery but from euro um, sorry from dollar um, weakness I think this is definitely a really nice uh, uh, currency pair to look for by trade setups moving on to the Aussie dollar and Aussie dollar again similar story to pretty much everyone else where you've got um, you've got uh, some dollar weakness and uh, I was saying again last week that in fact the forecast um, is for an 80 cent uh, Aussie dollar uh, price range. I'm going to now move uh, the supply zone to around here. I do think this is going to, you know, probably break to the upside. If you do want to get short, this is a really nice technical area. But fundamentally, I'm not really looking to short the Australian dollar against the uh, the US dollar. Um, any kind of pullbacks into demand zones, I think, would be uh, really nice. A really nice opportunity to buy the Australian dollar against the uh, US dollar in the short term and uh, moving on to the Aussie yen so Aussie yen again um, really nice trade setup we had a stop hunt trade setup around here in the group yeah right there there was the stop hunt setup this was the stop hunt oh it was right here really nice and then uh, ended up getting long so uh, uh, the guys in the group uh, you know whoever took that um, in the group uh, did you know benefit from that uh, trade opportunity if they saw it I did actually post it in the group um, but let's see what happens here's a daily demand zone so any kind of pullbacks into this zone I think are decent areas to look for by trades um, and again in the risk on environment the Australian dollar should really uh, win hands down doesn't mean that it's going to go up and up and up every single day or every even every single week but pullbacks um, in a risk on environment are always buying opportunities especially with commodity currencies like iron ore 
um, copper making new highs that supports the Australian dollar and just seeing that play out in the markets and I've been saying this if you go back to my uh, my weekly analysis videos I've been saying it for months for absolute months that all you needed to do on this currency pair um, is really just buy that's it just pullbacks 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 it's not hard to um, to uh, to see where money should want to flow into but does that mean that every single week that you know there was a buy trade this is what day traders um, and really kind of lower time frame traders don't understand you can't you know you know just because I'm long on a currency pair doesn't mean that every single day um, you're going to get you know um, or even every single week that is going to be a buy trade right because for example this area here you had one two three four five six days um, over a week of of bearish you know price action but does that mean that you should have been bearish on the Australian dollar absolutely not doesn't make any sense so you know we, we just have to be patient on our setups yeah be patient on the setups when it comes down to a level then you get long when it comes down to a zone then you get long you know when you see lots to see intraday setups to go long then get long right but the, you know opportunities great opportunities and buying opportunities don't come around every single day or every single week you have to have patience there has to be patience and then take your opportunities when they do come anyways uh, moving on to uh, gold and gold is again being a beneficiary uh, of, a, of a weaker dollar but also as well concerns around inflation right so there's been concerns around inflation we are in a risk on environment and in a risk on environment we don't typically see gold go higher but we've got a bit of a mix and match right so you've got on one hand you've got a weak dollar so a weak USD right which benefits gold but also you've got rising inflation right and inflation is above the central bank's two percent target right and if inflation is above that inflation is basically a devaluation of the currency so the higher inflation goes the more the currency is being devalued now um, where did I put that United States here we go so the forecast in fact and we're talking about inflation um, uh, coming up uh, on the 12th so this week uh, the previous was 2.6 so they're above the uh, two percent inflation uh, target but now the consensus and the trading economics forecast is for even higher inflation so 3.6 3.8% yeah inflation which actually now starts to put pressure um say put pressure but it creates a headache really for the um for the for the federal reserve because um the federal reserve don't want to hike rates because they understand that that would hurt the economy hiking rates too soon yet um you, you you've got inflation potentially you know above the three percent and i get that they're doing average inflation targets so even though you're seeing higher inflation it's pushing the average up which is basically forcing them potentially to have to act sooner and the, and the longer that they actually don't act to potentially raise rates that in the short term could actually benefit gold even more right because um, inflation may get out of hand and gold is a hedge against inflation the only uh, downside I guess to you know the trade idea is that we are in a risk on environment right so risk is on um, and um, and gold typically may not do too well in a risk on environment um, because money would really kind of flow out of gold and into um, other um, other assets right like for example the stock market you know other commodities and higher yielding assets so um, that's the only kind of downside but um, I did get this question from a private member um, and uh, I do think actually it's a decent idea a decent trade idea um, apart from the risk on I think if it was risk off yeah I think it would have ticked all the boxes and for me I would want for a you know a pullback and for a long trade but um, personally, I'm I'm gonna probably you know you know not not to not necessarily look for gold. I think there are easier trades out there, but it doesn't mean that prices won't go higher and that you can't get involved in this trade. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, right? Because I'm not trading something doesn't mean that you can't trade it. Um, but I do think there is definitely a you know now and at least in the short term. Um, some decent demand for gold especially with the inflation narrative so if you do want to trade gold um, obviously by all means you can do what you want but um, that would be the reason 
um, to, to, to really kind of get long on gold, especially with the recent um, you know dollar um, negative sentiment. So any pullbacks uh, may be a decent buying opportunity uh, for gold um and and for the for the at least for the for the short term for the next month or or, or so but let's see what happens but any positive news around the uh, the dollar um or for example if uh, inflation actually comes out below expected then that actually may um uh, not uh, push gold you know higher so uh, so any kind of uh, miss on inflation um gold may you know start to come down if in fact inflation is above that three point um uh, their expectation then i think gold may actually start to look to uh, go even higher than this uh than this uh, supply zone here right and then they got another supply zone right there so that would be pretty start to challenge the highs in fact but let's see in fact there is a let me just uh, put a high to it so you've got a yearly high to the yearly low this is where we are in between that. I think it's probably about fair. Yeah, it's a fair value between the August highs, the all-time highs, and the uh, I say all, all time. It must be all-time highs, yeah. And the actual yearly lows. Fair value is actually around this eighteen eighty level. So you could see prices come up here before actually starting to sell off. Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share uh, with your uh, with your trading buddies and uh, and uh, really gets the quality material out there. So until the next video, have a great week, and I'll speak to you all soon.